What is going on guys, welcome back. Today we're going to build a simple Caesar encryption in Python. So let us get right into it. Now, before we get into the actual implementation of the Caesar algorithm, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how it's basically working and if it's useful or not. So the basic idea behind the Caesar encryption is that you have some alphabet like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. Let's say this is the whole alphabet. And then what you do is you have a message in that alphabet. For example, this message could be B, so the insect B. And what we want to do is want to encrypt that message. And what we do to encrypt it in a Caesar algorithm is we shift the whole alphabet. So instead of saying A, B, C, D, E, F, G is the alphabet, we now shift it by a certain number. So let's say the shift is two. And what we would do then is we would shift the beginning to uh, by two letters. So in this case, we would start with C, D, E, F, G, and then append A, B in the end. And now what we do is we map the individual characters. So in this case, B is not B, but D. So now I would say D is the first letter. And then we have E, which is G. So then we would have this as a message here. And in order to decrypt that message, we would just have to shift it back. So we would take the alphabet C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and we would map it to the original alphabet by applying the same shift in the other direction. And obviously, I mean, I think you now have a little feeling about if this is useful or not. The Caesar encryption is not secure because let's say we have the 26 letters of the alphabet or make it uh, times two for lower and uppercase. You have a very limited amount of possible passwords because the password is basically just a shift and you can recognize patterns. You can recognize double digits and uh, not double digits, double letters and so on, duplicate letters. So, for example, if you have something like hello, this could be translated to something else, but you would still have a double letter here. So KK maybe, but it's still going to be a double letter and you can spot certain patterns in the data. <clears throat> and besides that, of course, you just need to try for example, 26 or uh, 52 different combinations and you have all the combinations and you can just brute force it. It's very easy. So this is purely educational. This is not anything that you would ever use. It's just getting a uh, basic feeling about the Caesar algorithm and how it works. So in order to implement this in Python, we need to import the string library or actually we don't need to, but it makes things easier. And we have to choose a certain text that we want to encrypt. Let's say this is the plain text here. Plain text is hello world, for example, and then we specify a shift, let's say seven, for example. And what we do now is we create a certain alphabet. So let's say the alphabet that we have here is just going to be uh, the string dot ASCII lowercase letters. And this will also work for uppercase letters, because the idea is that what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, have an alphabet and, uh, and, and match it to uh, a shifted alphabet. So what we do here is we say this is the basic alphabet, the ASCII lowercase letters. And then we also have a shifted alphabet, where we actually just start at the point where we shift. So let's say we shift by seven. So we start with the seventh character uh, of that alphabet. So in this case, we just say shift from shift on the, the index slicing shift colon means that we're starting at the position sh uh, shift and taking the rest of the list. And then we're just going to append to this everything that came before shift up until shift like that. Uh, and of course, we need to specify the alphabet before doing that. So the idea is that if we have something like ABCDFG, and uh, let's say we say, we want to shift this by two, what we do is we start with C, D, E, F, G, and then so this is this, uh, this part here. And then what we do is we say, okay, now uh, append the rest to it like that. And then what we do is we create a translation table. So we say table equals str make trans from the alphabet to the shifted alphabet, which essentially means that we're creating we're putting them below each other. So we have the alphabet and the shifted alphabet, and then we just map the individual characters. And if we want to translate a string now, we just go ahead and say plain text dot translate and we pass the table the translation table here. And we can go ahead and print the result actually let's say encrypted print encrypted and you can see that we get the encrypted message here now we can shift it only by one maybe you can see what's happening there um or actually it doesn't work out for the uppercase letters obviously it doesn't work out for the uppercase letters we're going to fix that in a second um 
now this should work. There you go. So if we only use lowercase letters for now, uh, we can shift the whole word here. Um, but we're also going to introduce uppercase letters and special characters in a second here. But first of all, I want to show you how you can reverse that. So first of all, if you don't shift at all, if you just do zero, uh, we're going to get the exact same word. And if we shift by five, we're going to get the word shifted by five, obviously. So each character shifted by five. Now, what we can do here to just unshift it is we can just go ahead and shift by um, by by 26 minus one. Now this does not work just like that because if I go ahead and say 80, uh, we're probably going to get uh, some issues because the moment we get above 25, so 25 should still work, but 26 should already be, uh, yeah, I mean 26 is actually the right result, but 27 then would still be hello world, which is wrong. So what we would do here is we would always take the shift that we have, let's say for example 80, and we would always take this modulus the amount of uh, or modulo the amount of uh, characters in the alphabet in this case 26 because we want to go full circle right if I shift it 80 what does that mean you just go in circles all the time so in this case this would work but what we would need to do to shift it back so let's say we shift it like seven what we need to do to shift it back to hello world to the original text is to just um, add the remaining amount to shift it by the remaining amount of 26. So let's say we have a word like this one here. This is the plain text here. And we know the password is uh, seven. So the shift is seven. What we do is we just shift it by 26 minus seven, and then we should get hello world as a result. As you can see. So now we're going to get a little bit more structure into this script here so that we can also do this with uh, special characters and uppercase characters. And for this, we're going to again import string and we're going to now define a function called Caesar and we're going to pass a text that we want to encrypt, we want to pass the shift, and we're going to pass multiple alphabets as a list. And inside of here, we're going to define a shift function. So this is a function inside of a function. And we're going to say, okay, just give me an alphabet, and I'm going to shift it. So in this case, we're going to do the same thing that we did uh, before, we're going to say alphabet, starting at shift, plus alphabet, up until shift, like that. And what we're going to do now is we're going to get all the alphabets, we're going to join them into one, we're going to shift all of them, uh, we're going to join them into shifted alphabet into one shifted alphabet. And we're going to start by saying shifted alphabets is going to be just all the uh, alphabets that we shift. So for this, we're going to say tuple map, we're going to map this shift function here. Uh, actually, we should not call it shift if the parameter is shift, let's call it shift alphabet. Alphabet. We're going to map the shift alphabet function onto the list of alphabets that we got. So we're going to shift all of them. And then we're going to say, um, join all of these things. So we're going to say, final alphabet equals joining all the individual alphabets. And we're going to do the same thing with final shifted alphabet is going to be joining all the shifted alphabets. And then we're going to create a translation table again. So we're going to say table equals str make trans from the final alphabet to the shifted, actually to the final shifted alphabet, come on. Final shifted alphabet, there you go. And then we're going to return whatever text we got dot translate based on this table here. And we can try out by saying plain text equals this is a new test period. Hello world exclamation marks. Now we have uh, some punctuation characters here and also some uh, uppercase letters. And now we can go ahead and say, um, print Caesar, this plain text here, then shift it by seven, for example, and use the list of alphabets string dot ASCII lowercase string dot ASCII uppercase, of course, you can write them yourself as well. And string dot uh, punctuation, for example. And if we run this, we're going to see that we have a result. And we can also shift by eight and get a different result. As you can see, 
So that's it for this quick tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it yet and click the notification bell to not miss a single future video. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.